Our first question is from Georgie RX. What are the top three training techniques for building muscle? Oh, top three most important things you should do to build muscle. Yeah, I would, think by technique, what do you think? What do you mean? Well, I get. I mean, it's just say the top three factors, I guess, okay. uh, for building muscle. I, the number one, and this one is just easy for me to, is to, to come up with is just get strong. I think at some point. Just lifting more weight isn't necessarily important, especially when you come advanced, because there's a limit, and then become you know you also start to get this kind of risk versus reward uh, ratio that starts to tilt more towards risk. But early on, when I I was lucky as a kid that I got had very brief mentoring from some strength athletes, and they literally told me, if you get strong, you, the muscle will follow. If you can squat you know, twice your body weight, you're going to have muscular legs. If you could bench your body weight, you'll see a difference in your shoulders, arms, and chest. So number one, like when it comes to building muscle, because muscle does, um, it contracts. And if it's stronger, the odds that you're building muscle are yeah. quite high. So that's to be the first one. I read this question and I was thinking, well, along those lines of strength, but I was thinking about building a stable structure, right? So having, having the foundation of, uh, you know, you being in good alignment, having... Uh, uh, you know, getting closer to good posture and having uh, your body just in a position where, you know, we could add this kind of stress to then work from there and like build on. So uh, to be able to, um, you, you know, focus on that specifically first. So now we can really ramp up uh, the amount of intensity and load uh, and demand uh, and change the environment uh, around, uh, you know, what our body needs to uh, work on. It's that's what then we can build and kind of go forward and build muscle. I would have to say progress, understanding progressive overload and, uh, specifically the ability to scale volume over time. Um, I think very few people volume is closely connected to muscle too. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that very few people actually track the amount of volume that they consistently. And I think just naturally we all kind of fall or go, gravitate towards homeostasis and this kind of natural amount of volume that you always train. So maybe you have some good weeks and then you dip down a little bit, some good weeks again, and then you dip down a little bit over the course of three to six months, you're pretty much kind of right. hitting the same amount of volume. And if you actually just really paid attention and tracked, you know, the amount of volume and then just incrementally, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more over time, I think you would notice tremendous difference in muscle. For me personally, that was uh, one of the biggest uh, shifts in my own programming when I started, to, and when I had to, right? When you're competing and now there's something on the line, um, I, I had to improve and build muscle after one show after another. Also, I'm not going to win, right? I'm, so, you know, and I had to do that. And when I did that, it made me, it really opened my eyes about my own pitfalls or my own like habits of kind of like form. So I, I think that a lot of people just do that. We gravitate towards the things we like. You have some good weeks where you train really hard and then you have weeks where you back off naturally. And when you look at it, uh, from like a bird's eye view and calculate it a lot, it's like, Oh wow. I pretty much always average about this much and simply being able to just know how to scale volume, I think is totally. tremendous. I, I want to add one more. I know that we said three, but I'll add one more, which is uh, eating in a calorie surplus and then eating adequate oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, protein. Feeding the muscle. For most people, it's not for all because some people have digestive issues in relation to what I'm talking about. But for most people, eating a high protein diet, as long as your workout programming is good and you're getting good sleep, Eating a, a high protein diet has profound muscle building of uh, you know effects in comparison to let's say eating what the RDA says you should eat in terms of protein and then a calorie surplus like if you want to add new active tissue to your body your body needs building blocks for that and if it's not provided those building blocks it's going to be very hard you can send all the great muscle building signaling that you want it just can't happen it's like having instructions to build a house and you have the workers there ready to go and there's no bricks and there's no wood and there's no nails. And so they're left there saying, we want to build, but we can't, we don't have the building blocks. So I know they said three, but I wanted to throw that in there. And I think that those, the ones that we listed are, I mean, Justin, what you said about having a stall, a solid foundation and base, you know why that's important? Cause I'm sure some people listening like, ah, just go work out and you'll build yeah. muscle. If you don't have a solid base, you're going to, at some point you're going to early, probably you'll hit a wall mm -hmm. and then you're screwed injury imbalance, your CNS is going to identify that you can't get stronger because it doesn't feel very stable. 
This is why good coaches always start with that. That's always the place that you start. You're never going to reach your full potential. Right, right. And I think that's, yeah, that's really just why I wanted to address that is just like to, to be able to uh, have that focus and, and intention. Uh, first thing, like you're going to reap the benefits later with mm -hmm. building muscle. Hey, if you like this clip and you want to see more like this, click right here. But if you want to see the full episode where this clip came from, click right here.